The Lockout Tagout Procedures The lockout tagout procedures should be clearly laid out based on existing electrical systems and equipment being used at the worksite. The lockout tagout plan should identify the personnel who will be exposed to electrical hazards during the procedure and the personal protective equipment that will be required to ensure safe execution of the job. The plan should also identify the person in charge and their responsibilities. Moreover, the lockout tagout plan should also identify how the locking and tagging of electrical circuits will be coordinated with other work operations in progress on the worksite. The NFPA 70E has delineated a number of steps for locking and tagging out electrical equipment to create an electrically safe work condition. Let's discuss these steps in detail. As a first step, all possible sources of electrical supply to the specific equipment should be identified by consulting up-to-date drawings and diagrams of these systems. Next, the disconnecting device for each source should be opened after properly interrupting the load current. As a third step, the blades of the disconnecting devices should be visually inspected to ensure they are fully open. Furthermore, the draw-out type circuit breakers should be disconnected or withdrawn to the test position. Next, stored electrical energy that may endanger personnel should be released. Capacitors should be discharged and high capacitance elements should be short-circuited and grounded. Stored non-electrical energy in devices that could re-energize electric circuit parts should be blocked or relieved such that the circuit parts cannot be accidentally energized by these devices. Next, the lockout tagout devices should be applied in accordance with the established procedures. A lock and a tag should be placed on each disconnecting means used to de-energize circuits and equipment. The lock should be attached in a manner that would prevent persons from operating the disconnecting means unless they resort to undue force or the use of tools. Each tag should prominently display a statement prohibiting unauthorized operation of disconnecting means and removal of the tag. If a lock cannot be applied, or if the employer can demonstrate that tagging procedures will provide a level of safety equivalent to that obtained by the use of a lock, a tag may be used without a lock. If a tag is used without a lock, the tag should be supplemented by at least one additional safety measure that provides a level of safety equal to that obtained by use of a lock. Such safety measures may include the removal of an isolating circuit element or blocking of a controlling switch. Before employees begin work on or near electrical equipment that has been locked out or tagged, each phase conductor or circuit part should be tested to verify the absence of voltage. In order to ensure that the test instrument is operating satisfactorily, the instrument should be verified on a known voltage source. Finally, for the equipment and systems where the possibility of induced voltages or stored electrical energy still exists, all conductors and circuit parts should be grounded before employees begin work on or near them, where it is anticipated that de-energized electrical components could contact other energized conductors or circuit parts. Temporary protective grounding equipment should be used to safeguard workers. Once the repair or maintenance work on electrical circuits and equipment is complete, the electrical components must be re-energized. Before electrical circuits and equipment can be safely re-energized, visual inspections and tests should be conducted to verify that all tools, electrical jumpers, shorts, grounds, and other similar devices have been removed. All personnel in the work area must be accounted for, and unauthorized persons should be warned to stay clear of these circuits and equipment. Each lock and tag should be removed by the employee who applied it or be removed under their direct supervision. If this employee is not present in the workplace, then the lock or tag may be removed by a qualified person designated to perform this task, provided that the employee who applied the lock or tag is informed of the removal of the lockout tagout device before they resume work at the site. All lockout tagout procedures should only be performed by a qualified employee or an authorized employee. For more information on lockout tagout procedures, enroll in our lockout tagout training course.